Okay, welcome to the video on um, California 7th Math Standard AF 4.1. This is part two of the Algebra and Functions 4.1. Part one was in equations. This year, part two is on inequalities. If you haven't seen part one, please make sure you watch part one first because I'm going to be, um, you're going to have to know how to figure out equations in order for you to do inequalities as well, okay? So like before, um, I'm going to be giving or showing you four sample problems here. Make sure that you are pausing the video, working it out first beforehand. If you have no clue in how to solve these problems, by all means, watch the video and then um, rewatch it again. But this time around, making sure that you pause and try out the problems for your on your own before seeing me work out the problems here. Okay. So um, like our equations video, you're going to find four extra problems at the end of the video for you to try out as well. Um, have that all done, bring it to class, and you'll receive your full credit here. Okay? So let's begin um, inequalities here. Let's start with definitions. This symbol here, what does this symbol mean? The symbol means that this side of the inequality is greater than this side of the inequality. That's basically what the symbol means. Okay, this symbol means actually greater than. It means that the left side is greater than the right side. And because we are um, Americans reading from left to right, the words greater than indicates just that, that this side is greater than that side. Okay, it's a comparison here. This symbol here is actually two symbols in one. This symbol means actually greater than and or equal to greater than or equal to that's what it means and so it could all it could mean that 10 is greater than or e greater than or equal to 2 that holds true or it could also mean that 10 is greater than or equal to 10 which means that we're relying on this portion of the um, inequality here 10 does equal to 10 as well okay so greater than or equal to is a combination of the two here is something called a less than which means that this side is less than the right side okay that's what it means and the final symbol means 2 is less than or equal to 10 or it could also mean 10 is less than or equal to 10 and so once again it's it serves as a dual function it could also mean less than or it could also mean the equal as well, okay? All righty, let's move on to our first problem here. We've got 8y minus 4 is less than or equal to 20. It means that we're multiplying 8 times an unknown variable, y, subtracted by 4. And so we're going to be applying the rules of equations here. And so we're working backwards. And so um, if you saw my equation video, um, because we're working backwards, um, the order of operations tells us to multiply first and subtract. We're working backwards because we've kind of got an answer here. And so we need to take care of the subtracting portion first. And what's the inverse of subtracting? It's actually adding. And so you would actually add 4 to both sides of your inequality here. Okay? And so by doing so, you end up with minus 4 plus 4 gives you a net value of zero and so we can kind of lose that and we end up with just eight times the y is less than or equal to 24. okay now notice how it's eight times the y or eight multiplied by y what's the inverse of multiplication it's dividing and so we need to divide by eight we need to divide by eight on both sides and what ends up happening is the eight divided by eight gives you that net value of a one 1 times the y gives you just the y, and y is less than or equal to um, positive 3. Okay, so that's my answer here. y is less than or equal to positive 3. So how do I figure out, um, how do I check my work to see if it's right? What I want you to do with these inequalities is I want you to actually graph. I do want you to graph them. And what do I mean by graphing them? Notice how our answer was y is less than or equal to 3, positive 3, okay? Take a graph, draw a number line, and it's a positive 3 was the answer. We're going to actually circle positive 3 on the number line here. 
And if you go back to um, the answer, equations tells us that there's just one possible answer. If my answer was y equals to 3, it means that there's only one value for y, which is the 3. Now, when we have an inequality, it means that my answer could actually be a 3. And so I'm actually going to be shading in that circle because it tells me that my answer can be a 3. Remember, the um, less than or equal to means less than or equal to. Um, I'm applying this portion of it, the equal part of it, which is the reason why it's, um, the answer could be a positive 3. Um, now we need to also look at the portion of the less than here. It's telling me that y can also be any number that is less than 3. And so y could actually be a positive 1. Y could be a 0. Y could be a negative 1. Y could be a negative 10. All of these values are possibilities for Y. And so the way you graph them is you just basically end up shading the left side of your number line. Because any of these numbers could actually be Y as well. And that's the cool thing about inequalities. You have more than one possible answer. Y could actually be a 3. Y could actually be a 0. Y could be a negative 10. I mean, Y could actually be a 2.9999999999, okay? 7. Y could be even a negative 100,000. 100. 100,100. 100, I mean, Y could be any of these values here. Okay, that's what inequalities are. Um, so, how do I check to see if I got the right answer? You start by writing out your original inequality. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a parentheses for the spot where my um, variable, I mean, what my variable was supposed to be. And notice how the y is less than or equal to 3. Um, I can choose any of these values from this number line to plug into this template here for me. So why don't I just say I'm going to use, I, I, um, I want to try to avoid the 3 here. Rather, I'm, I'm going to use the 0. Okay. Because I like the fact that 8 times a 0 is going to give me a 0. Okay, there's not much math to be done when, if I do it that way. And then I can check, is negative 4 less than or equal to 20? Yes, it absolutely is. So you know that you got the right answer. And so this little inequality here is my answer here. And the way you would write it is, for all y, y is less than or equal to 3. Okay? And... Um, that's my basic answer here. Let's move on to the second problem. My second problem. The second problem looks very similar to the first problem. Um, it shows here, negative 8 times y subtracted by 4 is less than 20. And so, um, like equations, we got multiplying first, you got subtracting second, order of operations, right? Being that the answer was given, we need to work backwards, so we're going to take care of the subtracting 4 first. What's the inverse of subtracting? Why it is adding. So we're going to add 4. And we're going to add 4 to both sides. Do this here. Um, you're left with just a negative 8y. It's less than 24. Okay. What do I do next? What operation is this here? What is negative 8? What are we doing to the y? We're multiplying negative 8 to the y. And so the inverse of multiplying is dividing. So I'm going to need to divide. What do I divide by? I need to divide by negative 8. I need to divide by negative 8 on both sides. What do I end up getting? I end up getting a y. And y is less than, um, oops, I made a mistake here. It should actually be a negative 8, not a positive 8. This does not make it equal. Um, and so I end up getting a negative 3 as my answer. Okay? So y is less than negative 3. Now, those of you guys that know how to do this properly, um, I am purposely doing this wrong to show you um, a non-example. So, um, hold on here. Um, so, let's pretend that this was my answer. We worked it out. We start graphing it by, uh, we said it was negative 3, right? Find the negative 3, okay? Now, do I shade that value in at this point? 
The answer is no, because it is not y is less than or equal to negative 3. Okay, that's not what that is. It's actually just y is less than negative 3, which means that y cannot be a negative 3. Um, so we don't shade that in. We only shade it in if it's y is less than or equal to negative 3. Okay, so um, it's telling me that the answer is going to be anything that's less than negative 3, which means that it should be everything underneath here, right? Anything below the negative 3 without it being negative 3. So um, we check our work by writing out our, equation, uh, our inequality, excuse me, okay, and create a little template to plug my variable of y in. Let's see, I can't use a 0 this time. Um, maybe I can use a negative 10. So negative 8 times negative 10 gives me a positive 80. You're going to minus 4 to that. And what do I end up getting? I end up getting a positive 76. Is that really less than 20? The answer is no. So we've hit a snag. What's going on? What do we have to do? Uh-oh. Um, it doesn't work. Why is it? If I go back and check my work, um, I've noticed that I've done the inverse operation. We added 4 to both sides. We've added 4 to both sides. Then I've um, divided by negative 8 on both sides. And I end up getting the value. It seems correct, but it's off. Let me um, kind of explain why it doesn't work here. Remember the, um, the integer rule, the little magic triangle, where if I have a number like, um, let's say, negative 8 times a, another negative number, it's going to give me a positive 24, right? So I take a negative 8 times a negative 8, and it's going to give me a positive number. If I take a negative 8 times a positive 3, so negative 8 times a positive 3, so it's going to give me a negative value. Okay, the, the integer rules of multiplication. It's because of this phenomena that my answer is not correct. What's going on here? Um, let me see here. Take a look at what we're doing here. We are taking this value, negative 8 times an unknown number, and we're dividing it by a negative number. When you have a negative divided by a negative, what happens? What happens to the original value of a negative 8? It actually ends up changing it to a positive number. And, and so it ends up changing it to a positive number, which means that we've totally reversed the value of the negative 8 to a positive value. We've reversed it. Okay, So we, we, what we really need to do is we need to reverse the sign as well. We need to actually change this to a y is greater than negative 3 as my final answer. This has to be my answer here. y is greater than negative 3. Okay? Um, once again, it's because of this phenomena where we take the negative 8. Anytime we divide or multiply by a negative number, what you end up doing is you end up changing the original value to the opposite sign. Okay? And so by changing to the opposite sign, we need to also change this inequality to the opposite as well, which is the reason why our answer ends up becoming y is greater than negative 3. And so how can we check that? Well, we go back to the other side, and what we can do is we can actually change the signs at this point, change the values as well. Okay? I need to actually redraw the graph too. So here's my graph. So rather than having it, shading it on the left side, we're actually going to shade it on the right side because my answer was, um, my answer was actually y is greater than negative 3. Okay? And so how do I check my work? Well, we start off by rewriting the original inequality. Notice how I kept the original inequality. Okay? Um, I, don't have, I don't change that at all. Okay, I keep it as is, and then I plug in a value that is on the right side of the negative 3. So here, um, why don't I just choose 0? Okay, 
Or if you want, you know what, let's just choose a 10. Let's choose 10. You can choose any of these values here except for the negative 3, obviously. So negative 8 times positive 10 gives you a negative 80 minus 4, okay, is less than 20. And now I've got negative 84 is less than 20. Is that correct? Negative 84 is less than 20? Absolutely. It is correct. And so my answer was correct. And so my answer is really y is greater than negative 3. Okay? That's my answer there. Um, let's move on to number 3 here. Number 3 shows 5 minus 4y is less than or equal to 45. Again, we start by minusing 5 on both sides. Minusing 5, minusing 5. We end up with minus 4y. Don't forget this negative sign. That needs to follow down as well. Um, negative 4y is greater than or equal to positive 40. And then what do I do next? You need to divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4 on both sides. You end up getting a y. Um, notice how we divided it by a negative number once again. Okay? So the symbol has to actually change and we reverse it to the other side, which is less than or equal to, and that gives you a negative 10, okay? That's my answer. Y is less than or equal to a negative 10. Um, if we were to graph this here, okay, negative 10, let's say that um, it has to be less than negative 10, so here's my negative 10. Let's make this negative 12, negative 14, negative 16. This would be negative 8. Um, negative 10 is here. It has to be something that's on this side here, okay? Any value that's smaller than negative 10, it, oh, actually, it's great, less than or equal to, so you do need to shade this in as well. And so you take your original to check. You plug in the Y. And let's plug in, let's say, a, um, let's say a negative 20 to make it simple. So it's negative 4 times a negative 20 gives you a positive 80, okay? And 5 plus the 80 gives me a 85. That's obviously greater than or equal to 45, okay? Any questions so far? If you do have them, write them down, please. Um, and let's, I'm going to have you work on this problem here on your own, okay? Pause it, write this down, and I'm, I'm actually going to have you copy these problems here. Okay, so you might want to pause your video and work on these four as well. Okay, um, and then when you've worked on these problems, I want you to unpause and then I'll show the answers on the next page here. And here is your answers here. Can you, can you see that? Okay, this is your answers. These are your answers here. So um, if you have any questions, please write them down and ask me in class or on Edmodo. Otherwise, um, rewind the video again and watch it from the beginning if you're not sure how to do these once again. All right. Thank you very much for watching.